Hey, what's up? It's your boy, the Dr. Investor, and welcome back to my channel where we talk about real estate investing, finance, entrepreneurship, and personal growth. So today's topic is how to select and screen the very best Section 8 tenants. So before I get to the topic, make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment. I'll be right back with the topic. So once you prepared the rental property and marketed the rental property, next you have one of your biggest steps as a landlord, which is selecting a tenant. Selecting a tenant will be one of your biggest steps because turnover, which is when a tenant moves out of your property and you have to find a new tenant to occupy the property, is the biggest expense you will face as a landlord. This is because when you have turnover, you have to find a new tenant and screen them, which can take up to three months. You have to also not receive any rent for that property, so that property is completely vacant, earning zero income. And you also have to repair any damages the previous tenant did before you let a new tenant occupy that property. You need to be very diligent when you're selecting your tenants because once you get a tenant in your property, it can be very difficult to get them out. Many landlord tenant ordinances in most major cities favor the tenants. And once they're in, whew, good luck getting them out if their lease isn't over. Some landlords may think a tenant not paying is the worst problem they could imagine. But just imagine having a low quality tenant in your investment property. These individuals are causing headaches. These individuals are destroying your property. And these individuals are not pleasant to deal with at all. I would pay that tenant the rent that they're paying to live there in that case to get them to move out because that headache is not worth it. And they're costing you much more money than you're making having them occupy your unit. The first step of attracting a high quality Section 8 tenant or any tenant at all is to make sure you have a quality property in a quality neighborhood. This is because if you have a property that is unsafe and low quality, you're only going to attract people that are willing to live in unsafe and low quality housing. At that point, you're going to attract not the best individuals. You're going to attract low quality tenants. So the first step for this process to even work, make sure you have quality housing and quality neighborhoods. When I refer to quality housing, I'm referring to houses that have great amenities inside them. In-unit washer and dryer, hardwood floors, new stainless steel appliances, air conditioning. These are what these tenants want to see in their home because that separates you from the low quality landlords that are offer them just the bare minimum in their housing. They want to live in high quality housing and rent from a high quality landlord. So make sure when you're buying your property or renovating your property, you are including these high quality amenities that these tenants want to have in there. When you're marketing your property, you're putting a lot of work into it. Like I said, you have a high quality property that high quality tenants are interested. So when you market it, make sure you're taking high quality pictures that emphasize the high quality amenities that you work so hard to put in your unit. Because like I said, high quality Section 8 voucher holders want to live in quality homes. So make sure you emphasize this when you're marketing your property. So after you've marketed your high quality investment property to high quality tenants, then you're gonna start getting all these calls from prospective tenants interested in your property. So when you get these calls, I would recommend make a long spreadsheet that includes the name of the tenant, phone number, the number of bedroom voucher size they have, and why they are moving. This will give you a lot of insight into their situation, kind of what they're looking for as a tenant, and you'll be better able to see if they're a fit for your property or not. I'll go into another video in a later series uh, specifying that more. 
So after you gather all that personal information, you want to make sure the prospective tenants send you their rent burden sheet. So in Chicago, anybody that's a Section 8 voucher holder has a rent burden sheet. This specifies the name of the individual on the voucher, everybody that's included on the voucher, which is usually their children, how many bedroom voucher it is, how much Section 8 will pay of the rent, and how much they will pay in the rent. This is very important because this is very helpful for your screening, allows you to see if this individual can afford your unit and verifies the individual's identity and that they have a voucher as well. Some, many Section 8 counselors that are assigned to the case of the individual will say, do not show the landlords your rent burden sheet because they do not want you to know what they can afford. But I say it's part of my screening process. So if you want to live in this home, I would have to see that rent burden sheet in order for us to move forward in our screening process. So after you collected the personal information, the rent burden sheet, Next, you just set up a showing time for them to see the property, see if they can see themselves living there, and if you can see them living there. So at every showing, I make sure that the individual brings a state-issued form of ID because you want to verify that it's that individual that owns the voucher. Because I can tell you one thing, some people are professional tenants. They know the ins and outs of things and can trick you if you're not um, wise enough. So I would make sure you have their ID to make sure it's that individual that uh, you'll be renting to and that owns the voucher. So at the showing, of course, the individual brings their ID in their voucher forms and you can verify the identity. And during the showing, you just let them see the house. I won't get too much into how I do my showing process. They see the house and if they're interested, I let them know my screening process, which I will get into. And if they're okay with my screening process and how I screen tenants, then I send them an application for the property. So now let's talk about my screening process. So first, I verify income by talking to your current employer. Then I do an eviction report, also do a background check, a credit report. Then I go into your rental history. I talk to any landlord you had within the last five years. And I also ask for a personal reference as well. So if all that fares well, and you pass all those screen steps, the last step I'll do, I'll do a home visit with your entire family at the home you're living now. So let me get into why I do each individual step. One of the steps I mentioned that I go over the rental history. This includes calling any past landlord they had in the last five years. So in part of my application, I asked them to list all the landlords they had in the past five years. So I'll call each landlord to see um, how they were as tenants. Did they take any legal action against you? And what do you have to say overall about these tenants? Nothing too in depth, but like typically landlords are usually willing to forward any information to you if there was any trouble within the property or if someone was pleasant they'll let you know they're pleasant let you know they paid on time um, and how they were as a section 8 voucher holder something that's very important to verify when you're calling these landlords is making sure the person they're listing actually owns the home like i mentioned before some people are professional tenants some people may have got kicked out of their past um, place of residence and they may just give you the number of a friend that of course and they say all great things about them like this person was the greatest there were such great tenants I highly recommend you take them so one of the ways you can do that um, when you ask for the property address of the place they were living at you can check public record to see who actually owns that home and that way you'll know if the person you're speaking to is someone who actually owns the home and is the landlord or if it's a rent if it's some form of uh, management company that may um, 
be managing the property as well. One of the other steps I mentioned is verifying income. So typically employers, this is confidential information and private information. So in order to do this, um, part of my application, I ask them to tell me how much they currently make and who's their current employer. So typically when you call the employer and you, and you wanna verify income, they'll just fax over um, a sheet of confidentiality and have the tenant signing saying they're acknowledging that they're going to be forwarding this private information to this individual and they're okay with it. That's typically um, the steps I had to go through in order to do this. So that's what you'll have to do. The next step I'll do is an eviction report. So this will tell me if the tenant was ever evicted in one of the places they rented. So typically evictions are public record um, and you can use many softwares that can tell you um, based on an individual's name and social security's number if they've ever been evicted ever in their lives. We also get credit reports on our prospective tenants. Yes, most of the individuals in Section 8 have low credit. If they have good credit, that's great. But if they do not have great credit, it's not a deal breaker. For us, we want to make sure there's nothing too alarming on that report. That's one of the reasons we use it as a screening tool. But it's not very high on our criteria to see if a tenant is going to live on our property or not. So once a tenant passes this whole screening process that I mentioned before, the next and final step is to set up a home visit. So at this home visit, I ask that everybody that's present on the voucher is there. So typically, most voucher holders are single mothers with multiple kids. So I ask that of course the mother's there and all their kids are there. So we can just have a interview the family, see how the house is upheld, and see if we're a good fit for each other. If I think they're high quality voucher holders that will maintain my home as if it's their own home. So when you go to someone's house, you can essentially get a feel for how well their home is upkept because how they're keeping their home now is how your house is gonna be three months from now. So I want someone who's gonna treat this home as if it's their own home and really value the care that we put in crafting this high quality home. Some people may say a home visit's so excessive, but if you spent $100,000 fixing up a property, and that's what we do, we provide quality housing, so we're spending a lot of money fixing up their property. I would like to know them have a quality person in that property. After the home visit, I get a pretty good feel of how the family is, how they're gonna maintain my property, and if they are high quality voucher holders that are gonna treat my home like it's their own. Like I mentioned before, Section 8 tenants will repay you in many ways. They'll stay a very long time. Treat your home like it's your own. And of course, that rent's gonna come on time every month because most of it is subsidized by the government. So that's a wrap for this series on how to select and screen Section 8 tenants. I know some may say this is very diligent, but for me, I want high quality tenants and I'm a high quality landlord providing high quality housing. So in order to do that, I gotta make sure I'm very diligent on who I'm letting in your house because once you get that person in your home, it's hard to get them out. So if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and I'll be back again with another video. The Dr. Investor is out.